Airflow's purpose is to automate and orchestrate a lot of your workflows that you'll be doing for your data pipelines. And the way it does this is it basically runs on a server all the time. And when triggers happen or when schedules come in, Airflow will trigger these workflows or DAGs as they're called, directed acyclic graphs to happen. And within each one of your DAGs, you'll have tasks or nodes, and these nodes will have dependencies between them to make sure that things upstream and downstream of each one of your tasks successfully completes before you continue on with your workflows. And so um, I'm gonna provide a link to all this code in uh, GitHub, but basically all you need to do to get started is very simple. Uh, you just open up uh, the GitHub repo, you're gonna clone the code. And the very tricky thing for me as I was getting into Airflow and in a Windows environment, maybe specifically, uh, was how to make references to external Python scripts. Because a lot of times when you see people introducing Airflow, uh, and walking through like the first hello world example, they're gonna reference or define the actual function uh, or the Python function that you're trying to automate within your actual DAG file. And so in my case, I have my DAG file defined at the root of my project under this thing called CRM elastic DAG.py. And right now it's just a demo file, doesn't really contain anything. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're defining our DAG object and then we're going to be assigning or providing a, a task or an operator for our DAG to actually do. And so in this case, I want to execute a Python function every day, for instance. That's the reason why within my DAG, I've given it a DAG ID. I've uh, given it some default arguments like who's the owner and when's the start date. If you start it in the past, it'll basically trigger immediately once you activate your DAG within the UI. And then uh, finally, you define your schedule interval and you can use their little quick notation at daily um, just to make this thing run every day without having to incorporate a bunch of other packages. Uh, Airflow also includes their own built-in date utility. So people who keep referring to like Python date time, um, it's really not necessary. Airflow has already included that in their package. So you can reduce some of the dependencies your project will have by just referencing what Airflow, Airflow already provides you. Um, and so, uh, basically, once you have finished cloning the repo, the next thing that you will need to do on your computer is make sure that pip is fully upgraded. If you haven't fully upgraded pip, uh, you can run into errors when you run the command pip install Apache Airflow. I'll provide a description of this in the actual content or description of this video. Um, but basically, if you haven't fully upgraded PIP, you can encounter errors because there's a lot of dependencies that Airflow looks for in order to start itself up. It's using Flask for a web server. It's using a bunch of other um, dependencies for actually running. So uh, make sure you have fully upgraded PIP on your local machine prior to running the PIP install Apache Airflow. Uh, that was a trouble. That was some trouble that I had when I was trying to get this thing going on this server. Um, and then the next thing you do after you've uh, installed the Apache Airflow is you also need to make sure that you already have Docker and Docker Compose installed on your local machine. Um, and once you've got Docker, Docker Compose, and Apache Airflow all successfully installed, uh, the next step here is going to be actually uh, running the command to build from your Docker Compose.yml file uh, a container to actually run your Docker server on your uh, server itself. And so in this case, one thing I want to make a note of is that the volume section here of the Docker Compose file is extremely important because what you're doing uh, specifically on line 29 here, I can zoom in, um, is you're basically telling Docker where are the DAGs going to be located within your project directory. And so in this case, I'm telling Docker that within the root of my project directory, it can find all the DAGs. So this is the source uh, binding and then that's the uh, actual container binding and so within Airflow um, if it if you change this value and you don't have an actual uh, Python file present uh, for your DAGs it won't find it and when you actually run the Python when you actually run the Airflow container it's gonna tell you it can't find any DAGs so uh, it can be a bit frustrating so just make sure that you are following this exact uh, clone of the repo when you're doing this uh, make sure you have the same file structure um, and so in my case in order to have a little script here that I've called hello world, um, its task ID is hello, and it calls a Python script called hello. And instead of defining the actual Python function inside of this DAG file, because as you scale this, you're gonna wanna have organization within your code, 
um, I am including a uh, I'm including the function from a separate Python script inside of my project directory. And so because I've told uh, Docker and um, Airflow that my root is where I'm start saving my DAGs, it will check the subdirectories. It will allow you to include subdirectories uh, of other Python scripts. And so that's how this magic works. So in this case, I have a file in here called includes and another, I'm sorry, a directory called includes and another directory called VS modules. And then within VS modules, I've defined this script here. Uh, and I just wrote one function here called hello and it just prints out hello. And so once you've done all this stuff um, and you understand the file structure, you can begin to include you know, more function definitions, additional Python scripts to include. You can begin to really scale up uh, your actual data pipelines. Uh, now you're ready to actually go in here and just type in docker compose up. And I'm gonna leave off the dash D so we can actually see uh, the output from our server in this case. Um, but right now, uh, if this is the first time you're doing it, it will take it a little bit of time as it is configuring everything, downloading the layers and all that from Docker Hub. And in this case, we're seeing that um, it is needing to do some upgrades. And so um, once this process finishes, the way you actually begin to interact with your Docker, I'm um, sorry, with your actual airflow, I'm gonna open up a new window here, is you go to localhost port 8080. And in my case, we can see that it takes us to this nice page and we can click on our DAG right here. Our DAG is currently off, so it's not running. But when I flip it on and I hit refresh, we can see that right now it's that light green status, meaning that it's running. And then if we refresh this again, we'll see that the task has successfully completed. And what that means, if we click on this within the tree view uh, for the actual task, and we look at the log, is we can see it running the uh, print statement that we actually told it to do. And so uh, if we wanted to update our code a little bit, so hello from an external Python script, and then we save this. Um, one thing you can do uh, is just let this thing update itself. So within the actual airflow itself on port 88 of your local host, you can go back to the DAGs section and then you can trigger the DAG to run again. You can see it's running right now. And then when we refresh this, we should see that it successfully completes. We're gonna open this up and we're gonna see the later completion date here. And I'm going to view the log. And we can see it saying hello from an external Python script. So that is how easy it is to get started with Airflow on this repo if you clone it. Um, you can do what I did and struggle and spend many hours trying to figure out how to get these external Python scripts uh, referenced and how to properly set up your config file to allow for it. But if you file this example, uh, you'll be well on your way to having a good, clean, organized data pipeline for your actual Airflow build. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and take care.